Let's go, guys. Let's get those glasses high in the sky. It is Friday, which of course means one thing. It's time for Last Call. What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and this is Last Call, where we're talking about those Final Order Cutoff books hitting Final Order Cutoff this coming Monday night. We're going to give you our 10 picks plus additional printings to be on the lookout for. Get those orders into your LCS or online Monday night by 10 p.m. Eastern, which is Diamond's Final Order Cutoff time. But either way, we're going to get right into it, starting with that Catwoman 80th anniversary. We've talked about a bunch of these type books with the different covers, the decade variants, Jack and I are big fans. Some people aren't, but I still like it. And I'm going to say, out of the covers that I've seen, minus store exclusives, I think my favorite right now is the Adam Hughes one. Wow. I'm actually surprised that you say that. I mean, yeah. the Adam Hughes one is fire. Absolutely fire. Um, I love the Jim Lee one. Um, but again, yeah, there's so many. So, 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 so many. Yeah, they'll come out of the store and they'll be like, okay, I pre-ordered this one, but I kind of like this one. Right. So here's my, here's my thing on this. We talk about pre-ordering a lot and it's again, one of the, the foundations and core reasons why we develop this, this program. But um, most of the time that we're talking about pre-ordering, we're talking about accessibility. That's not really going to be the issue here. We've seen time and time again, that these books don't like really sell out per se. Um, having said that, I've talked about my belief and I think you you feel the same way that there is some long-term value here um, just based on the quality cover art. The fact that you have these so many covers means each individual cover doesn't have the crazy print run. Yeah, it's like the Wonder Woman book. The Wonder Woman book sold, I think, 200,000 copies, but that's spread amongst X number of covers. Um, having said all of that, the value to the pre-order with this one is the value savings because you're talking about an above cover price yeah. MSRP. And a lot of stores are doing bundles. Right. So a lot of stores are doing bundles. The more covers you're ordering, the more you're willing to commit to, um, the more they're willing to drop that price. Uh, and this is where the value of developing those relationships, whether it's with your local comic shop, um, if you don't, for whatever reason, if they, they don't, you know, participate in some sort of FOC discount or something and you want to look online, there's several online comic retailers who do substantial FOC discounts, who do things like provide bundles and things like that, that Brian says. I think a lot of us get those emails from various retailers. Definitely and, check out our channel sponsors, Frankie's Comics and SlabHeroes.com. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Both of them do a lot. Um, Slab Heroes, they, they, they do a lot with the FOC stuff. Um, Frankie's, I think a lot of people tend to associate them with the exclusive variants and rightfully so, but they also do a lot of uh, FOC pre-order, especially for hot books. The, the and he was talking books. about doing a bundle for this book. I'm not sure if he, he decided mm -hmm. to do it or not, but I he's, he's done them in the past and he, he's, he's an, he's a prime example of somebody who will provide a substantial discount from cover price again, because you're committing up front. So your, your willingness to commit up front and to commit to X number of covers um, is going to provide you the largest discount. And, but even if you didn't want them all, even if you just wanted to get individual ones, this is what I'm saying, develop, flesh out those relationships, find out where um, you can save yourself 25, 30% and uh, put, put those pre-orders in before FOC, which again is Monday, 10 Eastern. Um, make sure you have those orders locked in uh, and, and pick your favorite covers because this is a prime example of one, like we're saying, where, man, Brian, this is, this is it, it's, it, you, Pringles you can't eat just one like I, I don't know I don't know how you choose just one cover um this to me is at least a five cover grab right and I will say it's important to know check wherever you're ordering from their that their cutoff time might be a little different because they might want to have time to get the orders in and up we say 10 o'clock that's the diamond cutoff where a lot of shops I know say like 6 p.m 9 p.m or something like that so make sure you're aware of that And here we have Champions number one. I don't remember Champions being around that long, but we've had number, Champions number one, I think, three times now. But either way, always love, we talked about this on 
Bolo show this week with Young Justice about champions. I'm more of a Young Justice fan, but the champion stories have been good. And we got a new number one coming out. And there's also a 1 in 25 incentive variant for this. Yeah, so I don't really know if this is per se any sort of investable book. Um, I'll put that right out there right off the bat. Having said that, we've talked about this in the past. These have been some of our um, kind of favorite Marvel reads over the last couple of years. Yeah, they've, they've, uh, they've definitely rebooted it. But again, these teen stories, this kind of like outlaw, um, vigilante, superhero story has been entertaining. Um, it's been a fun take on um, like Kid Nova. And it's also been a good way to use a lot of these younger characters, right? Because like Ms. Marvel's not an not a active part of the, of the um, Avengers, I almost said Justice League. Oof, that would have been nerd sacrilege. But, you know, it, it's not like Miles Morales is getting run with, you know, Avengers. So this gives these young teen stars almost a kind of teen Titans team up feel. I like it. Um, I, I, I'm excited to read it. It's written by Eve Ewing, um, you, who kind of like crafted Ironheart early on. So she's got experience with like, that type of uh you know uh, uh of character and and storyline i also will say i think that the champions number one uh first volume um i think is a kind of a solid slept on back issue that you'll see in bins and in on the alex tables. ross variant super under well underappreciated i'll say yeah yeah oh yeah you see you're talking about that the 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 with the more recent series. I'm talking about like 1980 or something like that. But uh, yeah, that Alex, I know what Alex Ross variant you're talking about um, is incredible. When, and, and, th- and if champions becomes a thing that that book could probably pop as much as the first appearance, because more than likely we would see it in a, um, I could see Disney plus, but we would see it with characters more in line with, what we're seeing with the current, you'd probably get Viv Vision and uh, Miss Marvel and, uh, you know, Kid Nova. Um, who knows about Miles Morales? That all depends on how the Sony deal would work. But, you know, I, I think that we could definitely see a Champions um, TV show or movie at some point in the, in the future. Uh, there's a lot of talk about Young Avengers, but, you know, who knows if they'll be married to that individual name. Here we got Thor number five. I'm absolutely loving this series, which I eat a little crow each time because I kept talking about how much I love Jason Aaron was worried about Donny Cates. Donny Cates has been doing good. And what we thought we were getting in last issue looks to be this issue, right? Yeah, this is a spec pick. I mean, it is what it is. Um, no doubt this is a series I'm enjoying reading. Um, this is a series that will probably live in the reader buzz section, similar to the way Venom has over the last year. But at the same point, you know, the reality is, yeah, um, Black Winter maybe not being as prominent in issue four as people wanted. You got to immediately pivot to issue five and kind of make that assumption. Now, Donnie will draw a story out. We've seen that with Dylan. So who knows for sure? But it's, it's a safe bet that we're going to see a larger appearance of Black Winter in issue five. So I would imagine retailers who ordered heavy on issue four are now scrambling to up those issue five orders from what they probably initially allocated uh, mentally for, the, for their typical order for that issue. So um, it, will there be a print run? Yes, I think it'll be similar to what we see with issue four, but the demand will be there. So that is definitely an issue to be on the lookout for. Then sticking with Donny Cates, and I believe this is a book that's not going under anyone's radar with the amount of covers they have for it, but we're talking about Venom number 25. This is what, the finale to Venom Island, right? Right. This has several different things going for it at once, Brian, which is why I think that this is going to be one of the most talked about books on this release week. Um, definitely a long-term play candidate. It's it's a conclusion of a, of a big-time story. So you're talking about reader buzz right there. Um, similar to what we talked about with Black Winter. We had a little revelation in issue 24 about Dylan. Um, it, it, the revelation also left a bunch of questions as we kind of saw Dylan take symbiote form. Um, but it was very reminiscent of 
a dinosaur, well, it was a dinosaur, very reminiscent of the dinosaur from, say, like the Old Man Logan storylines. Some slight changes uh, that definitely leave enough to have you questioning. Um, and we're going to have to wait and see where the story goes. So then there's that anticipation going into this issue. And then again, this is a um, anniversary issue. You kind of have this like special extra sized issue. Um, and for that, you're getting extra covers The Marvel's throwing a lot of effort into the art. And there's definitely been a marketing push. We're going to see a number of store exclusives. There's going to be a bunch of excellent store exclusive art and that Mark Bagley um, hidden gem variant has been heavily talked about in the community already. It's definitely one to keep an eye out for, for um, maybe you younger people in, in the Civilman's Comics family who may not be aware, but that is an iconic 90s poster, um, insert poster that uh, a lot of kids had on their wall. So having that then now be a wraparound comic variant seems to have really piqued the interest of symbiote collectors and we know and we've certainly seen it in 2019 that symbiote collectors dominate the hobby they will drive prices up so that's a book to be on the lookout for but really there's going to be so many nice covers it's a really a buy what you like situation you're going to have to watch out with the incentives as we always talk about because of the number of store doing exclusives that are going to have a high number of, of uh incentives in their possession a little inside tip that we always give you is look for stores who are doing exclusives um, they will also have the um, it, the incentives listed oftentimes they have them listed under market price because they can kind of afford to do that because of the large quantity our channel sponsors are doing uh, um, venom variants themselves aren't they Brian yeah, and both are gorgeous. I enjoy both of them. It's just one of those things, kind of like Jack says, with those incentives, they're going to get more. With the store exclusives, they're going to get more copies of the incentives. And there's a lot of store incentives. There's multiple one in 25s. Talked about the one in 100 Head and Gym. There's also the one in 200 Bagley variant that a lot of people are talking about. It's got a lot of buzz. I'm anxious to see how it makes me, myself, I'm more anxious to read the story than I'm not really hunting any of the variants. Yeah, you know, I, for me, it's it's definitely a story first situation um, because I've been following this story since it, it began. It's the first time I've ever been disinvested in a, a Venom story. Um, so I'm definitely interested in seeing how Venom Island ends, um, where we're going to go next. And switching over from Marvel over to DC, we have Wonder Woman number 755. Now, this to me is just a gorgeous art pick more than the story or anything else. There's a regular cover, but there's a cover B by Ian McDonald that's up for final order cutoff. I freaking love this cover. It's one of the best Wonder Woman covers I've seen in a while. And that's saying a lot because Friesen had some home runs, but I can't get enough of this cover. Cover price, cover B, definitely pre-ordering this. Yeah, we got to put a major bolo alert out there for everybody. Ian McDonald is um, finding his stride. There's there's definitely a tension being placed on him. It's it's kind of early stages, but we saw this with his DC Crimes of Passion Sad Lemon Comics exclusive variant that he did that really um, – Crimes of Passion didn't have a ton of exclusives. Um, but so Ryan were, Brown, I think, had one. Yeah, and, but it was one of those things where it's like people were like, what is that cover? Um, and that's kind of the reaction you're getting from Ian McDonald. So then the Catwoman 19 and 21 definitely got that response from people. Now you're seeing that with Wonder Woman. I mean, this, this covers a home run. Is it going to be a short-term game cover? Probably not. Is it a PC co cover you're going to pick up and feel really good about and love? Absolutely. Um, is it a book that, again, Brian, I'm not giving up on this. Do I think that over time that these books will have their day? Absolutely. I do think there will come a time when a new generation of collector will come onto the market who doesn't have the same predisposition to these DC cover bees that the current collector has, and they won't be able to get access to them. The, the reason why the prices are driven down is the easy access that we all have to these covers. They're on the new release walls, accessible to all of us. The, the kind of janky business practices that we see a lot of retailers taking part into raising prices, we don't see with the DC cover bees. So because of that, 
Um, I think we have this perception of them. And I think over time, as new collectors come into the market and these old ones, these classics that, you know, are so easy for you or I to obtain, um, will start to raise in value as those new collectors try to acquire them at the cheapest possible price. Yeah, I think there's another point also that we kind of overlook because we have access. I only have one shop in my town, but it's a pretty well-known shop in Third Eye Comics, right? Mm -hmm. It's a smaller store from the big one, but there's places out there around the country that have really smaller LCSs. A lot of times they just order that cover A for these titles. So Yeah, Yeah, I've I've met shop owners who are anti-cover B. Yeah, who are old school and just don't like the variants, or they order one or two, and order it if you pull it type thing. That's about it. So, so that's another reason why we put it up on here because that if you want to let your shops know and they don't normally order it, make sure you get those orders in for it because it's a gorgeous cover. It power pack number one. That's right, they're back and. Just like we talked about with that Venom, there is a nice 1 in 100 hidden gem variant. But tell us more about this, Jack. Well, Brian, you get full disclosure for everybody. I was in full preparation mode um, to take a, you know, like a full, yeah, a full, a full on like food poisoning dump on this one. Um, there's just the reality is this is a book that for the most part is created to retain the IP license for power pack um, that you, you have to re-release new products or you can lose that license and they don't want to lose that. There's been talk about power pack showing up in movies or TV. I don't know. I think uh, that was more when they were trying to slant using free form towards a younger demographic. And we saw, um, you know, like cloak and dagger and runaways, but those didn't necessarily do extremely well. So I, I think that kind of initiative has been changed. Plus Jeff Loeb is gone. Now Kevin Feige is in charge. So it's a whole new game. The reason why I will not take that jump on this book at this point, Brian, is this is part of outlawed. Now we just talked about outlawed with uh, champions. champions. So outlawed is going to be a one shot. It's uh, about a, it's a vigilante crossover storyline where they are going to essentially make it illegal in in this like the 616 for any uh superhero under the age of 21 to be a superhero they make it they you suddenly become a vigilante it becomes outlawed um so obviously this is going to affect the champions and this is going to affect teenage stars so this is a um spinoff series from that outlawed storyline the power pack being a younger storyline so power pack is never something i would read or pay attention to power pack is certainly not on my radar but i'm very interested into this in this outlawed story i think it is a a interesting concept um we've often heard the comic trope of like batman being a like really a crappy dad because he puts his young wards in such danger and uh, so, you know, it makes sense that like a government would outlaw being, uh, uh, you know, a teenage superhero. So this, I think this could make for an interesting story. I- I'm going to give it a read. So I'm actually going to check out Power Pack number one just because it's part of the outlawed crossovers. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to check it out. Still. So that's still just me. Catch- we'll see. Are you going to read the outlawed one shot? Yeah, I'll definitely read that. So if you read that and you read Champions, you're not going to be curious about the rest of the story, what's going on with the rest of the universe? I've just never been a big fan of Power Pack. Well, me either, but I, you know, you, you got to paint the whole picture, buddy. <laughs> Staying with Marvel, we have Punisher vs. Barracuda number one. This is going to be a five-issue miniseries. I'm interested in the story, but more importantly, there's some great incentive variants for this. There's a 1 in 25 Acuna variant, but I really like that 1 in 50 Del Otto variant, that white cover, gorgeous art. Del Otto, the name hasn't meant as much as it has in the past, but this is one cover I see, for me at least, is hot fire. It's going to have a few things going for it. Brian's a white cover. It's going to be a tough 9-8. Another thing is, I don't know how many stores are truly going to order 50 copies of this. I don't think this is going to be... um, heavily heavily ordered because it's a mini series and while mini series have this not like barracuda some like huge right even i had to look up um you know it, it, 
it's not that miniseries in general don't work. We've seen them really work well in independent comics, but within Marvel, these like side stories, they're not, they're not drawing the same sort of numbers. I got to say though, Brian, I really like these Punisher miniseries. I think that this is how you utilize the Punisher appropriately. Um, because you're able to tell a story, you drop them in a place and time. Um, you don't have to have this big world thing going on with Punisher because he's very much a what's in front of him type of guy. And uh, I think that these different stories also lend to different artists and different writers taking hold of the character. It seems like Punisher is one of those characters, if you talk to any comic book writer, everyone has a Punisher story. Everyone has a Punisher story they want to tell. That's, um, the, that's the story that they, of their own life that if they could live that way, <laughs> that's yeah. the story they want to write. Right. So everybody's got one. Um, and, and that's like the one thing that they would want to do. Um, so uh, I like these miniseries. And I hope they continue to ha- use Punisher in this way. I would even like to see more characters um, utilized in this fashion. I think the ongoing series doesn't work for every character. Um, look how many characters have not been able to sustain an ongoing and if they release a new punisher series tomorrow um unless it it caught some immortal hulk type of heat the reality is issue one would be popular because of variants um and then beyond that nobody would be talking about the series so there's several characters within the marvel universe if you were really to sit down and think about it um that would do really well in these mini series type four issue let a, a, a guest writer come on and take a crack and tell a story so here's something i would love to see happen that would never happen because marvel would lose money on because they like to sell those single issues but these are perfect type these five issue mini series take what they're doing with marvel tales right now with those reprints of the past issues and make marvel tales like the five issue almost like a trade and sell it as it comes out, not like the five issues, then a trade of it, but make Marvel Tales one of these longer stories with these writers and with that great cover. So now you got fantastic story, great cover, and it kind of means more to spend that extra money just on the MSRP for the cover A regardless. But well, like I, I said, think, very I, wishful I, thinking it won't be no, done because they lose money. They could do it. They could do it. In, instead of doing them in one-shot forms, do it the way Marvel Tales used to be as an ongoing series where every month there's a different – unique individual story so one month you have marvel tales wolverine the next month you may go marvel tales wolverine for three months but then you're going to go into the next character and the next character and you bring on guest writers it would also be a great way brian to try out new talent um let emerging ascending talent dc does that right they dc does a much better job of cultivating that next crop you really have to smack marvel in the head um for for that like that top crack like top crowd to move in but like you know a guy like we talk about somebody like source point press is frank gogol who's getting a lot of attention or um cantos david boer um i'm sure those guys have a marvel story they could tell a one shot one issue like you said oversized and then do the same thing you're doing one in 50 in yuck Lee's. yep they'll be printing money Then shifting gears from the big two, we're going back over to Indie Small Press with Boom Studios, and we have that Buffy Every Generation number one. We haven't talked about Buffy much on this show recently, but here's one issue that I think the show is perfect for. A lot of people aren't going to be aware of it, but it's a pretty big key issue, isn't it, Jack? It really is. Um, You know, this is going to be one of those stories. Again, I'm full disclosure. I'm not, I didn't grow up a Buffy fan. I I wasn't, you know, a big Buffy fan. I've enjoyed reading these stories because I've been able to take a fresh approach to them. But the hardcore Buffy fans out there, the Donnie Cateses and the comic Toms, they're going to have nerdgasms all over this one because we're entering basically a Buffy verse. We're, we're, we're getting to a point now where, um, we've seen various versions of Buffy, whether or not it was the comic that is currently in in publication from Boom Studios, the television show. We had the movie version. Um, We had the one shot, the chosen ones. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is the chosen one, but we got a chance to see all these various chosen ones throughout kind of like time and history. Um, And now all of these Buffys, all of these chosen ones, we're getting a story uh, that's going to bring in 
all of these generations. And uh, this is going to be big within the Buffy community. Now, there's been a lot of debate as we've kind of covered this Buffy stuff. How big is that community? Um, we talk oftentimes about respecting other fan bases. Like you may, if, if, if it's not for you, don't read it for sure. If that's not your thing, don't worry about it. Um, for the investors out there who are trying to say, make a good short-term play or a long-term play, um, you know, you always want to respect other fan bases. There's, there's people out there that are diehard about certain things. Trying to gauge the Buffy market over the last year has been a little difficult because it's been ups and downs. There were some people who jumped on who have jumped off. Um, there's been books that have gotten hot and almost inexplicably. And then there's books that you think would be hot that aren't. There's a lot of great variants and first appearances out there below what I would call market value for these books. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how all of this is received, Brian. Um, but the Boom Studios is putting a lot of marketing and effort behind this. They're excited about it. This is one that definitely is going to have a lot of Buffy fans talking. Sticking with Indy, we're moving over to Dark Horse, and we have Dead Dogs Bite number one. We got dogs, Jesse. Get the dogs, Jesse. Dead Dogs Bite number one. I'm looking forward to reading this. Read this, solicit. It is a four issue mini. Dark Horse, they're putting out some great stories. They're not getting a lot of attention that you hear on like the secondary market off and on, but like no one left to fight. That was one of my favorite stories. The trade just came out for that. I picked that up. Dead Dog's Bite, though, looks to be another great story. Tell us more about it, Jack. Yeah, it's coming from Tyler Boss. And Tyler Boss may be a name that you're not familiar with, but uh, maybe one that you may want to get familiar with. He's uh, most known for kind of like making his debut and winning a bunch of awards with the Black Mass Studios release of Four Kids Walk Into a Bank. Now, Black Mass Studios, if you're new to comics, you may not be familiar. There was a time this indie publisher entered the comics uh, publishing landscape took the world by storm, had a number of books that were just red hot on the secondary market, were winning awards, Eisner awards and such. Um, on the, they just had a hard time keeping a release schedule. Not only that, they ended up dropping off altogether. Um, we were supposed to get more Four Kids Walk Into a Bank. We were supposed to get more um, of a couple of their other series. I think only um, Space Riders, you know, one of the only ones that like consistently um, was releasing new like one shots and things. But, you know, that really slowed that momentum. But during that time period, that was the big uh, debut of Tyler Boss, working with uh, um, Michael Rosenberg. Um, and at that point, um, I'm working, with, working with Matthew Rosenberg. Um, and at that point, um, you know, I, I could see Tyler Boss starting to make his way, but he reminds me a lot of Ben Bishop in that, he hasn't necessarily come up the mainstream big two way doing a lot of like doing his own work. And in this one, he's the writer, the artist, the whole deal. He's doing covers. This is all Tyler boss. So, um, I, he's sometimes, the boss. I sometimes find that stories where the writer and the artist are the same person. Um, they can be really good because you can get kind of like a, it's personal, right? They, it's something they've worked on. He came up with that the whole thing, start to finish. So um, this is one worth checking out. I like Tyler Boss. He's somebody I've kind of paid attention to for the last few years. Um, so anytime I see a release or a solicit with his name on it, it's something I'm paying attention to. And it's why we want to highlight it on the, uh, the FOC, the last call show. Then the last one we're going to talk about tonight for our picks isn't a single issue, but it's an omnibus. And we're talking about that absolute carnage omnibus hardcover. We talk about this a lot on this channel. We're like, hey, I can't wait to pick this up and trade or wait for a hardcover. Here we're getting that big hardcover of absolute carnage. Yeah, and right now it's available for pre-order on Amazon for sixty-seven fifty and free shipping. But this is one of those prime examples of a book where talk to your LCS, see what they can get that order in for you because um, a lot of them will give real nice discounts on trades. Trades are reorderable. Um, it, it, it's one of the kind of bread and butters of the LCS, the brick and mortar comic shop. So that's something to keep an eye out for. And 
this is kind of a classic story, I think, in the making. We've talked about that, where um, people are going to be paying attention to this one for a, a long time. And while, yes, this is a, a $75 retail book, Brian, you mentioned the sheer number of um, one-shots and spin-off miniseries that were involved, absolute carnage. You'll spend that just grabbing issues. The 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 one first prints of one through five of absolute carnage will run you 40 bucks um so you know to go and put this amount of individual floppies together you're gonna end up spending 75 dollars. but for your 75 dollars to get absolute carnage one through five to get absolute carnage versus deadpool one through three absolute carnage captain marvel one absolute carnage mortal hulk one absolute carnage symbiote spider-man one absolute carnage symbiote of vengeance one um Absolute Carnage Lethal Protectors 1 through 3, Absolute Carnage Avengers 1, Absolute Carnage Miles Morales 1 through 3, uh, Weapon Plus number 1, Scream 1 through 3, uh, Separation Anxiety number 1, Ama uh, Amazing Spider-Man 29 through 31, Venom 16 through 20. So you're even getting those tie-ins from Amazing Spider-Man and Venom. Um, so you're looking at a multitude of issues coming in this hardcover and it's something that we wanted to highlight this week. Number one, because it's a light, honestly, it's a lighter comics week. But also because it's something we talk about on SimplemansComics.com. We've got that full list there. That full list includes action figures, trading cards, um, Funko Pops, and trades and omnibuses. And I think a lot of times those things are overlooked. People are focusing on that individual issue and you can really save yourself a lot of money. Who doesn't want absolute carnage in their collection in a nice hardcover? Yeah. And I will say you mentioned Funko pops, you know me, I'm a big mess of the universe fan and we'll city comic con just got postponed, but they have an awesome he man slime pit Emerald city or convention exclusive Funko and it's available at GameStop. So if you're watching this right now, check your games out. Check online. If you're a Mass Universe first fan like I am and a Funko fan, that's one that I'm excited to get. So there it is, guys. Those are our 10 picks for books that are hitting Final World Cutoff. Jack said it was a light week, and I kind of agree. But what the interesting thing will be is on release week, let's see how it plays out. Because we've had a week or two like this on the Final World Cutoff show where release week comes. And we're, like, surprised at some of the books that we thought was a light week that actually gained some heat. So. You never know. That's the great thing about this hobby. Either way, like we always do about this time, we have those additional printings to announce, don't we, Jack? We do, but I don't just want to announce them, Brian. We've got a couple we need to talk about that we've got to highlight. And um, there's no surprise. I've got my Batman shirt on. We're talking punchline. And Batman 89, Year of the Villain, Hell of Risen 3, are going to a third printing, and they are hitting FOC this Monday. Now, the second prints are above cover price. That was a good investment if somebody pre-ordered those. Um, I think the third prints will be a trap. It's one to watch out for. I think any store who maybe didn't order up on the seconds will order up on the thirds. Any store who ordered up on the seconds and did well will order up on the thirds. I think you're going to see them ordered uh, in plenty. The cover art is available. It's, you can see it right on your screen. Um, Year of the Villain, Hell Arisen, number three, which is probably the better book, the full appearance of Punchline. Uh, I like the purple cover. I think it looks cool. But at the end of the day, I hate these lazy ass, just simple cover, color changes. It is minimal. I will give them. Yeah, not to mention, what if you're colorblind? <laughs> then you get nothing. Um, I'll give them a little more credit on Batman 89. I like the fact that they took the cover A and turned it into a cover B style minimal trade dress. I think that that is a unique idea. It's still the same cover, um, but gives it kind of a different look and feel. If they would have done that originally with the second print with both of these covers, I don't think I would have complained as hard as I did on the uh, Bolo show talking about my long-term play of the week. Um, at the same point, Brian, I can't guarantee that these two books won't be long-term plays of the week this week um, because the reality is the entire comics community has punchline fever. And I caught a lot of flack for picking those books. And I think I caught that flack because people think I have the punchline fever. Oh no, I'm quarantined. But the reality is I will respect other people's fandoms and people are going hard for punchline right now. So if you didn't get yourself a copy and you want to read the book, now is a great opportunity. If you are 
full on in punchline and you want to add these to your collection, now is a great opportunity. If you passed on the second prints because you just were like, you know what, you can't sucker me in with this same cover. All right, at least we got a slight change with both of these covers. Maybe you can add them to your collection. And if you're all in on investing in punchline, you got another great opportunity to grab a couple books that you know you can grab, slab, hold, and, and ride this punchline wave. So we wanted to highlight those sp special from the rest of the list, but that's not the only good ones, Brian. Because on top of those, we're kicking off the rest of our additional printings list. And I really want to highlight that Thor number two, third print. Thor number two is a really hot book. So I think that uh, third print is going to get attention. We've also got Star Wars, Rise of Kylo Ren. Um, number one, the fourth print, Marvel going to a lazy cover, color change. Strange Academy, number one, has a second print. A lot of first appearances there. Star Wars, number three, getting a second print. Magnificent Miss Marvel, number 13, getting a second print. Amazing Spider-Man 40, getting a second print. I don't know who's buying all these Amazing Spider-Man late printings. Um, Decorum, number one, real popular image comics. Jonathan Hickman getting a second print. Um, and then DC Comics, we've got Nightwing number 70 getting a, a second print. We've got Last God number three getting a second print. And from Dark Horse Comics, Spy Island number one goes to a second printing. So there it is. Those are our 10 picks. Also the additional printings, plus a warning from Jack on those third prints for Batman 89 and Hell Arisen. If you want to see the full FOC list, which, like Jack mentioned, the comics, games, trade paperbacks, omnibuses, toys, cards, that full list is up on simplemanscomics.com right now. Also, go ahead and sign up for the email listing so that we can mail you with special announcements that will be coming due on that website very soon. We're going to start giving that a little bit more attention. But that's our lost call. Jack and I, see you in the next video.